I never really seriously took myself as an artist for many years. I mean, I didn't really want to say I was an artist, I think, until I was, you know, halfway through my career, in which I said, oh, I guess I am one, because I, I seem to be doing this over and over again. But I really couldn't find a useful reason for being an artist. If I was off in a studio making little images, how was that going to work for what I cared about? The reason I arrived at Muros was because I was interested in the use of public spaces and how people use them to speak about who they were to, to make those walls community newspapers. I wanted to make work that my family would see, and they were not people who had had the experience of going to museums and to galleries. And in Mexico, I think they uh, saw the public murals, you know, they saw that work. And I started to think about, in the middle of a movement, the Chicano Movimiento was going on, the civil rights action was going on, and it was 1969, and it couldn't have been a better time for me to be positioning my thoughts and my work in social change. What if I put the work in the places where people lived and worked? What if it was in the laundromat? And what if it was on the street? And what if anybody could see it? It could not be controlled. What if it was owned by everyone? I organized the City of Los Angeles Street Mural Program and got it funded through the city in 1974. The project was able to accomplish 250 murals. The billboards that we look at, the things that we see on TV, what's in your eye space is also about power. So where do we have power? Where could people who are simple people who don't have tremendous amounts of money have power? Well, in the places that are most denigrated, One, as the kids call two, it, the sewer. Three. There's a mural I know where the people all paint in the sewer. P, you, now, don't get this wrong. This is just a funny song about the sewer. P, you. The concept of the mural was to bring a group of youth together from different neighborhoods who had had trouble with the police and have them try to accomplish something together that was greater than any one of them individually. And so we attempted to paint the longest mural in the world. But the idea was that we would paint the history of California, put particular emphasis on the part of history that had been left out in history books. Your culture, my culture, everybody's culture's in the sewer. P U. The feedback that goes back to you is that they are no good. We have all kinds of systems to say, don't hang out in the park, don't write on walls, don't do this, don't do that. But what we don't say to them is what they should do. It was dirty, different. Learned a lot. The importance of having a job. And you get, you get your name up there. I thought we were going to paint one summer with all these kids from all these different neighborhoods and all these different ethnic groups, and we'd be done with it, right? But that was clearly not what others had in mind. We had to find homes for those who had to be runaways because of the, the situations in their families. We had to deal with food because they didn't eat. They'd leave home without having breakfast. They'd start fainting on the site. You know, we had to go through this whole process of finding psychological support for kids who were in trauma. So the Great Wall became one-stop support for young people that worked on the piece, and over 400 of them were on that production. Judy. Yes, ma'am. Lexi, this is your face just get paint all over me all the time. Oh, you're talking about that. Oh, next part. What do you think? Next part. Next part. Yeah, the next part. 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 Like, that's that cream that we use, like. Okay. 
I'm a dish rag. I'm completely covered with paint. I've only been here 10 minutes. All right, any other color problems? I was anything but an artist. People wanted to ask me all the time, where did your hand begin and where did it end? Because artists didn't do this. They didn't work in a collaborative way. It was called community art. Community art was lesser art. I mean, it was kitty art. It was children's work. It wasn't serious artwork. All of these people of color carrying out you know, images about their story. And that was not considered to be significant art. It had to be what they called universal, which universal meant white. A friend of mine, another artist said, oh, Judy, you'll never be accepted by the art world. And, 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 I, and I said to her, so what? <laughs> so what? As long as I can do the work, right? 